Hey, Bob Nagy, AB5N, back here with an interesting comparison today, something nobody's done. And I'm going to take the ICOM 7851, top of the line, still here in 2022, and compare it directly with their dual receiver ICOM 7610, IC7610 SDR transceiver, and see if that almost $10,000 price difference really makes a big difference or not. Completely different architecture, the 78, 50, and 51 are the pinnacle of HF achievement, the 50 year anniversary of ICOM, what I consider to be the best Japanese manufacturer out there. And the, the other radios was released a little bit later, a few years later, but it has a seven inch screen and it has dual receivers and it's all the same type of stuff that the 7851 series radio has. Well, let's see with that 80-20 rule, you know, you get 80% of the performance or 20% of the price, you want that last 20, you gotta pay 80% more. Let's see if, if that's really the case here. Nobody else has done this, so let's, let's do it. Well, taking a quick look at the front panels here, the 7851, and his brother, the 7850, are certainly gorgeous radios, sort of the ultimate expression of the ICOM look. The 7610's no slouch, same size screen, slightly newer design element there, the sort of shiny piano black. The screen on the 7851 is very punchy and contrasty, and because it's not a touchscreen, it's a little easier for them to get those super black blacks. The 7610 screen is virtually identical, except that it is a touch screen, so it has a little bit less contrasty blacks than the 7851. Taking a quick look at the rear of the 7610, we can see it has two antenna connectors. That's not too bad. It's got two USB connectors on the rear and two on the front. You've got your external monitor connection, which is great. You have your LAN connection for remote operation and other features. Two speaker outputs for both receivers, and we on have a transverter uh, input on the left and additional receive antenna connectors, those BNC. So it's got quite a bit of I.O., and there's even an output for controlling the uh, an external antenna tuner. We have also two RCAs, which are for the amplifier, ALC and the PTT, which is very convenient. You look at the 7851, well, there's a lot more real estate to work with. First of all, four antenna connectors. Wow, that is a big plus because you can have all of the antennas you need for the bands hooked up at one time. No reaching in back to switch the external antenna switch in the back. Here you've got it all integrated. Looking at the BNCs on the bottom left, we have not only the transverter connection, but we have two additional receive antenna loops in and out, and we have a 10 megahertz external clock input, which you can use a GPS, GPSDO clock. You don't need one, the thing's very accurate, but you could put it in there for perfect accuracy. It's got all of the uh, USB connectors on the back at once, plus your LAN connector, but it also has separate accessory connectors for both sides of the transceiver. That means your audio in and out, your PTT, and all of that I.O. So it's got four connectors instead of two on the bottom right there. The rest of it is fairly identical. Before we take a listen to both of these receivers, let's take a look at the specs. Now, the sensitivity, we're all familiar with that. This is three ratings, no preamp, preamp one on, and preamp two on. We can see without the preamps on, that first number, the 7610 is more sensitive, and we saw that. But once you kick that first preamp on, they're virtually identical. You kick the second preamp on, and the 7851 is more sensitive. Next is the noise floor. That's sort of a product of sort of the LO and stuff, but you can see that with both of these numbers, the 7851 is a quieter receiver. 100 hertz blocking that has to do with selectivity. This is where you're going to get in really close and say CW and you want to be able to discern one signal next to the other. It's a world of difference under 7851. So you can separate those really weak ones that are very close. LO noise, that's going to be really critical in these things. And you can see that the 7851 is quieter, completely, you know, cleanly quieter. Um, Ultimate filter cutoff. Interestingly enough, the 7610's SDR design gave it 10 dB more on the ultimate filter cutoff. At these levels, not going to really notice that probably, but it does win there. And 20 kilohertz and 2 kilohertz, a dynamic range from the weakest to the strongest signals. What can it handle? The 7851 is clearly superior in both of those spacings. 
at uh, Sherwood Labs, number 20 on 7610 and 7851 is number 8. Are we surprised? No. If it wasn't a better receiver uh, in the 7851, then we'd be, we'd be surprised. But no, the 7851 is the superior receiver. Uh, I don't think I could do 20 right now. I, I, I do get on CW occasionally, but not very often. Uh, I hope to run into you again. Uh, I'll say 73 uh, and enjoy that nice warm weather down there. N5 of Victor, November Fox, KR0E. So the 7610 seems to have a little bit more treble, and the 7851 sounds a little smoother, but about the same meter readings and readability. So my subjective observation is that the 7610 is slightly more sensitive with both radios having their preamp 1 turned on. Now if the preamp 2 was turned on, the 7851 would pull ahead in sensitivity. The 7610 also has more treble and more bottom end coming out of the speaker. That treble really helps my ears with intelligibility in it. That results in the 7851 not quite as good readability. But of course, as we saw from the specs, it's far superior in dynamic range and selectivity. And and there was a little bit of QSB fading on that second uh, CW recording with the 7851. Now let's compare all the standard features that are common in both radios. First, setting the filter bandwidths is virtually identical on these radios. The display screen is almost identical. You adjust the bandwidth with a VFO dial and set the three filters up, including their shape set. This is the 7610. Here's the 7851. Looks and feels virtually identical. Now the difference is that the 7851 has roofing filters. See the little selections? And each of your filter presets can have a separate filter selection. These are all stock. And you also have the 1.2 roofing filter. You'd think it was too wide for CW or too narrow for sideband, but you can detune it and make it wider or optimize it for as tight as it can go. And thus it is usable on SSB in very, very difficult conditions. On holiday weekend and national holiday and things like that. Uh, we'll be we'll be yanking it around behind the truck before too long, but uh, I'm not looking forward to snow. So we'll well I'm going to check the weather and see if I can delay my flight. Maybe uh, then I can keep operating this radio instead of going back to the other one. Although. I wanted to let Kevin know that I'm going to go back on that 520SE when I get back there and see how we do uh, with the sunspot cycle the way it is. Rust-Oleum makes a matte black, so it's not quite flat, and it's not gloss. It's not semi-gloss, it's matte black, M-A-T-T-E. That's right. Well, well matte is more of a uh, flat. That's right. These aren't exactly flat. They're more like fat. More like a fat finish. And then there's kind of like, uh, you know, specks uh, all over the place.
Well, as we see, the performance of the DNR notch and peaking filters is very, very similar. There's no reason for them to write new algorithms, even if they're using different chips and different radios. I did think the 7851's notch was slightly better, but generally the performance is almost identical. Now, let's take another listen to both radios with a moderate level CW signal, and both of them with their APF filters engaged. I think the 7610's extra treble on the top helps in this situation. The tuner operation in both these radios is identical. Hold down the tune button, takes a few seconds, memorizes it. In using them, I found that the 7851's tuner covered a wider range of mismatched antennas. The menuing systems on these two radios are vastly different. On the 7851, it's more like a TS990S. It's sort of word and text based rather than graphical. And the selections are pretty much the same stuff that the 7610 has. Uh, it's quite extensive. It's easy to use. You pick out what you want to do, adjust it, and it takes it and memorizes it. And I haven't found any difference in the networking capabilities either or selections. So it's just a different kind of layout, a more traditional layout. I never get lost, and I do find it very easy to use. The 7610 menuing system, by contrast, is an all-new graphical interface, and it allows you to sort of see little icons that represent the different functions. And each of them is very easy to understand because they're more graphically based rather than text-based. Access to everything is quite easy, and of course, though, you do have more of the stuff in the menus than you have as front buttons on the radio, because it just has so many less buttons. I do occasionally find myself not being able to immediately remember where to find some of the simple stuff. I want to adjust the mic level or something like that, and it just uh, I have to <laughs> look in the manual or I have to really poke around for a while. But really, the capabilities of the menuing system in the 7610 is pretty much identical to the 7851. Both of these radios have dual Digicel front-end pre-tracking filters, and their function is very much different than you'd find on an FTDX 101 series radio in their front-end filtering. These filters are specifically for keeping close stations out of your radio. So if you're in a multi-op, field day kind of operation, and you've got guys really close to each other, this will keep those guys out of your radio, and it's a tracking filter, so uh, it's got a little bit of preamplification to overcome the loss of the filter itself, and it really does what it's supposed to do, but it, it, unlike what you think it is, which is a front-end pre-selection filter, it's really a brick wall filter to keep other nearby stations out, and both of these radios have two complete units in them. Now, it's very difficult to demonstrate the transmit quality of these two radios and compare them on a YouTube video. What I can tell you is, of course, they're well within FCC specs for spectral purity, and both of them produce very nice, clean signals on the air. But they use very different circuit architecture to do this. The 7851 is a pure superhet radio, and the 7610 is an SDR. Completely different. They do have the same TX equalizers, and the 7610 is very similar sounding on the air to an IC7300, which we all know sounds really, really good. The 7851 is more similar to other high-end ICOMs that we've seen through the years. I can say, though, using the same studio mic and the same EQ settings, that I get more unsolicited, high-quality audio reports coming back on the 7610 than I do on the 7851. Wow, the HD video really shows the uh, dust. <laughs> the 7610 just has the absolute basics that you need up front. Uh, all of the normal stuff is there, and the VFO dial is considerably lighter weight and smaller than on the 7851. On the uh, left side of the radio, it's what you expect there in the ICOM design. The volume knobs do have a little bit of slack in them. That has been noted. But boy, if you want to go from VFO to memory, it's three buttons on the menus. On the 7851, of course, we are presented with everything you need here, and that's a lot of what we're paying for. Dual controls for the uh, two receivers on the radio, 
and uh, they're right next to each other and logically laid out. You lift your hand up, put it on a control, and it's probably the one you need to do the job. And uh, on the right side of the radio, we've got, as well, dual controls for both sides of the radio here. And a lot of the stuff that you have to go into menus, of course, is right top, front, and center. So it's a real joy to operate. It feels sort of more analog-y. The tuning dial as well, VFO, is big, heavy, and gorgeous. I did want to mention that both of these radios have RIDI and PSK31 decoders. Neither has a CW decoder, and they also have memories for contesting and such. And all of the other standard features which you've come to expect are directly comparable in both of these radios. So let's get all subjective here and talk about a final tally. 7851, oh, much higher price. 10K less, the 7610 is. A little bit, little bit less than that, but roughly. We do have a 200 watt transmitter on 7851, and that is a 3 dB improvement. That is a big deal. It means uh, you don't really need to turn on the amplifier a lot of the time or buy one at all. The other one, of course, 7610, 100 watt transmitter. The receiver is much more selective. We saw the uh, specs there from Sherwood Labs. Well, uh, it's what we would come to expect from a radio of this class. It's a top shelf performer. But the receiver on the 7610 seemed to be a little bit more sensitive on occasion there. It was interesting, of course, has less selectivity. The 7851 comes with four roofing filters built in and that incredible narrow one that we adjusted and showed you there. That was a uh, a high dollar add-on to this radio. The 7610 relies on its SDR DSP based filtering and it does a fairly good job. Uh, the screen is higher contrast on the 7851 because it's not a touch screen and on the touch screen 7610 there were some displays, a considerable amount that had problems with burn-in and such and ICOM's been replacing those even out of warranty but that is something that sort of everybody knows. There's much more I.O. on the 7851. Uh, the four antenna connectors on the back, it sounds like a simple thing, but it is a huge thing in day-to-day -day operation. I get really sick of, you know, switching, reaching back and switching antenna connectors. Uh, 7610, it's just what you need. It only has two antenna connectors, to, but does have the, uh, the extra receive connector like the 7851. The 7851 just feels and sounds smoother and more analog on the audio side. Uh, the 7610 has that SDR digital more aggressive sound to it and its little brother 7300 even more aggressive sounding. Now all the common controls you'll ever need are on the front of that 7851. It's one of the things we are paying for and of course the 7610 is very heavily menu driven and it lacks some of the very common things like microphone gain or memories to uh, VFO switch on the front and it can be frustrating at times. The 7851 of course is the 50 year pinnacle of super het uh, technology from ICOM which has all those decades of experience in this. The performance is absolutely great. You couldn't ask for more. On uh, the 7610, of course, this is their second SDR radio. It's going to be one of the first that they ever have produced. It doesn't really have any glaring issues with it other than the screen. It's a nice performer, but it is one of the early model SDRs. So you see these radios have a very similar feature set. They come out of the same design house, but there is a difference in the foundational basic performance between these two radios. So there you have it. Well, now, have we answered that question? You know, there's a lot more at play there than just, well, the money differential. Uh, there's a prestige and ownership of knowing you own the absolute top of the line. Well, you could get a 7850 with the gold knobs and all, but, you know, the, the pinnacle of HF engineering of five years ago or so. And there is sort of a satisfaction in knowing that you've got that radio. And for a lot of us older guys, it, uh, you know, it's that time to say whether you're going to get that radio you always wanted or not. It may be the time to get that radio. But uh, if value's your thing, that 7610, I love that radio. And hmm, I don't know which one's going. Probably, uh, I, I don't really know. <laughs> but I'm going to enjoy them while they're here. All right, take care. See you next time.